This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, Using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game was filmed with my patrons, and we have Gao playing Adrix and Nev Twincasters. He keeps Windswept Heath, Blighted Woodland, Scalding Tarn, Command Tower, Kadama's Reach, Fathom Mage, and a Seedborn Muse. We have Nils playing Yerok, keeping two snow-covered forests, a wasteland, a snow-covered swamp, a mystic sanctuary, three visits, and Azusa. Sparky is playing Tatyova, keeping a forest, an island, burgeoning, Avenger of Zendikar, Gush, Mana Breach, and Dark Depths. I've taken my Ramos deck out for a spin, keeping Steam Vents, Plains, Woodland Cemetery, Golgari Charm, Dragon Skull Summit, and an Essence Symbiote. Gao wins the die roll and starts us off. Gao plays a windswept heath and passes, cracking it and losing one to go and find a land. I play a tap temple of malice, scrying one. Sparky plays a forest and casts burgeoning. Nils plays a snow covered forest and Sparky gets to put out an island from the burgeoning trigger. Gao plays a scalding tarn, cracking that as well and losing one to go and find a land. Sparky also gets to put out Dark Depths, and we pass to me. I play a tap Steam Vents, which Sparky has no land for his trigger for. Sparky draws, and passes. Nils draws, and plays an island. He casts three visits, passing while searching. Gao drops a Command Tower for turn, and casts Kadama's Reach. He also goes to find some lands, and passes while searching. I just play a tapped Woodland Cemetery. Sparky draws, and passes. Nils plays another snow-covered forest for turn, and then taps three for Azusa. This lets him play at a wasteland, and then another land, and he has enough now to cast a Springbloom Druid. It enters, and he sacrifices a land to go and find two basics, passing while searching. Gao plays a Blighted Woodland for turn, and then casts his commanders, Adrix and Nev, twin casters. I draw, and play a Mountain. I cast a Golgari Signet, which I then activate to cast an Estin Symbiote, and I pass to Sparky. Sparky draws, and plays a fancy Flooded Grove. He then pays 3 for an even fancier Nissa Basswood Seer, and as she enters, goes to find a basic force to put to hand. Nils taps out in his main phase to put out a very early and very aggressive Torment of Hailfire where X is 5. Gao is able to stop this with a free Fierce Guardianship though, and Nilsen just passes. Gao untaps and draws. He plays an island, which lets Sparky put out a force he'd found earlier. Four mana then gets Gao and Fathom Mage, and he passes turn. I play a Plains for turn, and go at Nils with the Essence Symbiote. He double blocks, and I decide to take out Azusa, and then pass to Sparky. Sparky also plays a Blighted Woodland, and taps 5 for an Urban Evolution. He draws his cards, and plays it on an island, which then transforms Nyssa to her Planeswalker side. He upticks her to reveal a Soul Ring, putting it to hand, and then casts it, passing turn. Nils casts a Ghostly Flicker in his main phase, blinking and returning the Spring Boom Druid and a land, and then sacrifices a land as the Druid enters. He goes to find two more basics, putting them onto the field tapped. We then see a Mystic Sanctuary come into play untapped, and he puts on top of his library the Hailfire to draw next turn. Sparky also gets to drop a Polluted Delta as the burgeoning trigger resolves, and we then move to Gao's turn. Gao plays a Mystic Sanctuary as well, returning his Fierce Guardianship to the top of his library as well, trying to set himself up to help counter the Torment again. He then casts a Seedborn Muse, who comes in and triggers the Fathom Mage's Evolve ability, giving it a plus one plus one counter, and drawing him a card, which we know is the Guardianship. Gao then suspends Search from Tomorrow, and passes. 
At the end of turn, I use Beast Within on Seedborn Muse, which has Sparky responding. He uses Gush's alternate cost of returning lands to hand to draw some cards, and the Muse is then blown up, and Gauk gets a Beast token. My turn is quite quick, as I play Dragon Skull Summit and pass. Sparky draws and plays a Waterlog Road for turn. He then brings out Tatiova. He takes one from tapping the Grove to cast Crucible of Worlds, and then cracks his Polluted Delta. He loses one life but gains it immediately back as the land comes in, and then draws from Tatiova after he finishes shuffling. He then upticks Nissa, revealing Court of Calling and putting it to hand, and then passes turn, moving to discard. Nils draws his Torment to the surprise of no one, but instead casts Yeruk in his main phase. He then plays a land for turn, which lets Sparky drop another one as well, gaining one life and drawing a card from Tatiova, and Nils then passes. Gao down ticks the suspend counters on his search and plays a land in his main phase. This has Sparky drop a land as well, drawing one and gaining one. Gao then plays out a Toski Bearer of Secrets, followed by a Quandrix Cultivator. The Cultivator triggers the Fathom Mage's Evolve ability, giving it another plus one plus one counter, and drawing Gao a card. It also lets him go and find a basic forest or island to put to field. This lets Sparky put a tap Teleria West, gaining one and drawing a card. Gao then moves to combat, swinging the token and Fathom Mage at Sparky. Before moving to blocks, Sparky uses Capsize without the buyback paid to bounce the Fathom Mage to Gao's hand. Sparky then takes the hit for three, and Gao gets to draw a card from the Toski trigger and passes. I draw and play a Glacial Fortress, and then tap enough for Ramos. With my dragon on the field, I pass turn. Sparky untaps and draws. He casts a Royal Elemental which is just... not great, and I begin to question if I was too hasty with my Beast Within. Sparky plays an Island, and this lets him steal away the Ramos with the Royal Elemental trigger. He then upticks Nyssa hoping to hit a land, but reveals Sunder instead, putting to hand. He then taps 6 mana, plus 1 creature, to convoke Court of Calling where X is 4. I counter this with Dovin's Veto though, and we also realize Sparky should have a plus one plus one counter on my Ramos, and he then passes to Nils. Nils sadly doesn't have a board wipe, but does cast a Chromus Memorial in his main phase. This gives his creatures a healthy serving of keyword soup, and he goes to combat. Yurik goes swinging at Sparky, who debates on if it's worth blocking and having Ramos die. He decides it is, and with Yurik having First Strike, Trample, and Death Touch, Nils only needs to assign one point of damage for it to be lethal, which means the two other points of damage tramples over onto Sparky. Nils also gains three life, and he then passes turn. Gal removes the last counter from his search on his upkeep and goes to find an island. He then draws for turn and plays a Reliquary as his land drop, before casting the Fathom Mage again. He then casts a Hornet Nest, which evolves the Mage, drawing him another card and giving it another plus one plus one counter. Gal then casts a Simic Signet and follows up with the Simic Staple, a Trigon Predator. He then moves to combat and swings some stuff at Sparky. Before moving to blocks, Sparky loses two by casting Noxious Revival for its Phyrexian mana cost to return Capsize to the top of his library. He then blocks Toski with Tatiova and takes a hit from the other two. This lets Gao draw two cards from Toski and he passes turn. I draw and cast a Parcel Beast in my main phase, and that's my turn. Sparky untaps and draws. He plays a Polluted Delta from his graveyard for turn, with the Crucible being out, gaining one and drawing a card from Tatiova's trigger. He also gets to steal the Trigon Predator from Gao from the Royal Elemental, and then taps seven mana to cast an Avenger of Zendikar. It enters, making a lot of Broccoli tokens. He upticks Nyssa, revealing Badoka Gardener, and then cracks the Delta, losing one, and then gains one, but loses two more, as is a breeding pool which he has come to play untapped. He also gets to draw a card, plus gives all of his broccoli tokens a plus one plus one counter, and this time steals the Eric. Three mana then gets Sparky a Wayward Swordtooth, and he plays another land for turn. This time he gets two triggers from each landfall, gaining him two life, drawing him two cards, adding two plus one plus one counters to his plant tokens, and stealing two more creatures with the Royal Elemental. This time he takes Toski, and the Hornet Nest, which Gao tries to bribe Sparky not to do. Most of his stuff can't attack this turn at least, and Nils offers to help out by lending Sparky the Memorial as long as he doesn't get attacked. 
With nothing else, Sparky then passes. We're all hoping for Nils to draw a board wipe, but sadly, it's just a scoot swarm. He then plays a tap myriad landscape, which triggers landfall on the swarm. Unfortunately, this also gives Sparky a land drop with burgeoning, and he gets to pump his board further, gaining more life, and drawing two cards. He also steals the original Scoot Swarm and the Beast token from Gao. Nils' Scoot Swarm token then comes into play, and he passes turn. Gao draws, and I'd even be happy to see a Cyclonic Rift at this point. He taps 6 mana for Spitting Image, and targets the Royal Elemental with the spell. This prompts Sparky to recast Growth Spiral once he gains priority. With that on the stack, once he gains priority, Gao casts Fierce Guardianship to try and counter it, as we think Sparky's trying to draw into a counter. This is wrong, as Sparky casts Deprived to counter the image, and bounces a land back to his hand. Responding to this response, which is a response to another response, Gao casts Inspiring Call, making his creatures with a plus one plus one counter indestructible, and drawing a card for each creature with a counter on it, in this case it's one. They then resolve the spells with both the Spiral and the Spitting Image being countered. Gao then casts Kazmina, and up takes the Planeswalker once she resolves. He scries, and bottoms the cards, and passes to me. I draw, and it's not a board wipe either. I activate the Parcel Beast, looking at my top card, and putting it to hand since it's not a land. I then try and mutate a Dreamtail Heron onto the Parcel Beast, which responding to the mutate trigger, has Sparky cracking his Misty Rainforest and losing one to go and find a land. He gets all of his landfall triggers, and steals the Parcel Beast away. Plus the second Scoot Mob. I then draw into nothing, and I pass turn. Sparky untaps, and draws. He's all but got this game in the bag at this point, and he floats his mana before casting Sunder. With the floating mana remaining after bouncing all the lands back to hand, he's able to cast a Crater Hoof Behemoth, which he drawn, and it pumps his board massively, and he's able to take us all out in one swing, winning the game. Game review time. So I want to talk about two main things. One's a blunder, and one's something I'm not too sure if it was a mistake or not. Let's talk about the mistake or not first, and that was using the Beast Within on the Seedborn Muse. I think that was a bit of a knee-jerk reaction on my part, but typically as soon as something like that resolves, I feel like it has to be dealt with, otherwise that person is going to have so much advantage over everyone else. The only reason I say I'm not too sure if this is a good idea or not was because I'd never actually seen Gao's deck before, so I have no idea what kind of advantage he was going for. The mistake I want to talk about is when I tap my lands incorrectly. I should have left one land and the Golgari Signet open before the turn that Sparky went off. I'd had the Golgari Charm in my hand since the get-go, and it wasn't even like I had any other kind of interaction in my hand at the time, it was just me tapping my lands too quickly and not thinking about it. This can be a very punishing mistake, especially in a 5 color deck, when it can be a real struggle to have access to certain colors when you need them. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.